Hey guys, in this video I'm going to present the last geometry problem from the team competition of this year's Middle European Math Olympiad. Let's start by taking a look at the diagram. We have given a triangle A, B, C and consider the midpoint M of side BC. Now we define I, J and K such that I is the in-center of triangle A, B, C, J is in-center of triangle A, B, M and K the in-center of triangle A, M, C. We now take the point P on line M, K such that the angle P, J, A is equal to the triangle interior angle C, B, A. In the same way, we choose the point Q on line M, J such that angle A, K, Q equals angle A, C, B. Lastly, we intersect lines B, Q and CP to get a point R and we would like to prove that the line passing through R and I is perpendicular to BC. First of all, let's try to find some nice angles in this picture. We notice that K and J lie on the angle bisectors of angles CMA and AMB respectively. And since angle CMB is 180 degrees, it follows that this angle here angle KMJ is equal to 90 degrees. Since we already know this angle here, namely it's just angle CBA, which I will denote with beta, we would like to find other angles including J. Note that J is the in-center of triangle ABM. This triangle has two really weird angles that we don't understand, but the third interior angle is beta, which is quite promising. In particular, we can now get this angle MJA in the following way. MJA is equal to 180 degrees minus angles JAM and minus angle AMJ. Since angle JAM is just angle BAM over 2 and similarly AMJ is angle AMB over 2 and these two angles sum up to 180 degrees minus beta, we get in total that angle MJA equals 90 degrees plus beta over 2. Now we can use the condition that angle PJA is equal to beta. By subtracting these two equalities, we can get angle MJP, which is therefore nothing but 90 degrees plus beta over 2 minus beta or 90 degrees minus beta over 2. Moreover, we had already figured out that angle PMJ is a right one. Therefore, we can use the fact that angle MJP equals 90 degrees minus beta over 2 to conclude that angle JPM equals 90 degrees minus 90 degrees minus beta over 2, which is nothing but beta divided by 2. We notice that since we are dealing with in-centers, this angle beta over 2, which we have just discovered to be equal to angle JPM, already appears in our picture. Namely, these two angles right here are equal to beta over 2 as well. In particular, this angle MBJ is an angle over the same line segment as angle JPM, namely segment MJ. If B and P would lie on the same side of this segment JM, then this angle equality would tell us that these four points would lie on a circle. However, we can clearly see that this is not the case here. This motivates us to reflect one of the points B or P about line JM. Since we already know that the angle PMJ is orthogonal, it would be really nice to reflect P over line MJ because this is nothing but the reflection of P at M. Putting all of this together, we obtain that points B J, M and P prime, the reflection of P at M, lie on a circle. Although we cannot quite fit this entire cyclic quadrilateral on the whiteboard, we can notice about it that it also has a right angle here, namely J, M, P prime. Importantly, this also tells us that the opposite angle P prime B, J is equal to 90 degrees. Since line B, J equals B, I is just the interior angle bisector of angle C, B, A, this angle condition implies that line BP' prime is the exterior angle bisector of angle CBA. 
Moreover, we can notice that BP prime is just the reflection of line CP at M because P prime is the reflection of P at M and B is the reflection of C. Since R lies on line CP, this tells us that the reflection of R also lies on line BP prime. In other words, if we let R prime be the reflection of R at M, then BP prime is nothing but line B R prime. In the same way, we can repeat the argument with P and Q swapped and B and C swapped to conclude that line C R prime is the exterior angle bisector of angle A C B. Therefore, R prime is just the intersection of these two exterior angle bisectors and in other words, the AX center of triangle ABC. At this point, it is left to prove that the projection of the in-center I on BC, which I will call X, and the projection of the AX center onto BC, which I will call Y, are just reflections of each other at point M. Notice that points X and Y are just the touching points of the in-circle and AX circle of triangle ABC on side BC. It is well known that these two points are symmetric at M. We can prove this by showing that segments BX and CY are of the same length. And you can find the proof of this result in our wiki linked below. Therefore, I am done with my proof and wish you a nice day.